I'm in agreement with the idea that there is a secret space program. I think um, my reaction always is, why wouldn't there be? Um, the reason being that we have had secret programs, scientific programs, for a long time. In the United States in particular, we've had, uh, we had the Manhattan Project, which was the development of the atomic bomb. We kept that secret very well. What we didn't know was the Japanese were working on the atomic bomb and the Soviets were working on an atomic bomb. And the Nazis were working on, it, on one as well. So everyone manages to keep these kinds of secrets very well. Today in the United States, we have the Patriot Act. We have all sorts of ways for the government to keep secrets from the people, especially after 9-11, so that the possibility that there exists a space program being run, let's say, by members of corporate America or the military industrial establishment uh, is, is very possible. Why wouldn't there be? If our scientists truly believe that the world is becoming less habitable, whether global warming is caused by humans or not is not the point. If it's happening and if the planet is becoming less inhabitable, then it means that some scientists, some organizations who can uh, create some form of space travel will be desperately working on this. My fear is that those first seats will not be taken by people like you and me. It's going to be taken by people that we really basically don't trust and don't like. Right. And they'll be the first ones off planet. That bothers me. So do you think that that's the primary motive behind this thing as well then? It's like they have an idea that the planet is you know, dying, things are failing on this level and they need to go elsewhere? We're running out of clean water. We're running out of clean air. We're running out of room. We're running out of food. Fossil fuels are, are almost gone, almost depleted. I think that the planet as we know it either has to change or people have to start looking at you know, ways of solving a problem in, other, in another way, in a more dramatic fashion. Right. So whether that's the primary motive or not, I, I, I really don't know. I'm speculating right now. But why wouldn't there be a space program? Why wouldn't there be a secret program to get off planet? Uh, we have individual entrepreneurs like the guy from Virgin Atlantic building his own space shuttle, you know, and charging millions of dollars for a seat. That could be the sign of things to come. <laughs> <laughs> so uh, uh, do, does this incorporate ET in the picture at all? Does it, um, you know, do they have to be part of this? Or is, can all this be human, you know, created? Can we have the technology basically from the, from the start of this? Well, we had a lot of technology that we took from the Germans at the end of the war that people didn't realize existed. Uh, sorts of alternate forms of energy, for instance, alternate forms of, of uh, aircraft, of, of aviation technology, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. A lot of that already existed with them. Uh, based on that, and with the possibility that there has been contact, uh, ET-type contact, if we put those two things together, we have a tremendous engine of technological development of which we may not be aware uh, in general terms. You know, another Manhattan Project taking place right now under our noses that yeah, yeah. We don't, we're not aware of. No, I haven't myself seen a UFO or anything of that nature, but my research into the field uh, indicates to me that very many uh, people in, in the American military establishment went on the record on, on ETs in a positive way, saying they did exist, and we were frightened. We thought there was something. We still think there's something. From the lowliest enlisted men up to general staff, uh, people with general rank and, and uh, colonels and majors, all coming forward and going on the record and saying, yes, there is something. So I have to kind of believe that. If I don't believe my own eyes, because I haven't seen anything like that, I kind of have to believe that there is something going on. Yeah. So my mind is open to that uh, poten potentiality. Yeah. Sightings of aliens and that sort of thing? Don't know. I really can't judge. You know, uh, a lot of very reasonable people have come forward with this kind of uh, insistence that they've had these experiences. I have no reason to doubt them. Uh, some of these people are very good witnesses. They were impeccable witnesses. Um, so either they're mistaken, and if they're mistaken, it means that there's something very strange going on, where a reasonable person comes away thinking they've been, they've met an alien or been abducted by an alien, mm -hmm. a law enforcement officer, a military man, scared out of his wits for something like that. It happened for a reason. So was it a setup? Was it a government or a military uh, program? If so, we have to be very afraid. Yeah. If it was not, we still have to be very afraid. There's still something going on that we should really pay close attention to. Now, just a final question. From your particular kind of perspective, um, there's an incredible amount of UFO activity down in South America. Yes. You've been focusing primarily on you know, the Nazi connection, going out right. you know, to South America. Is there anything, in your view, then, behind that? Uh, and that these are, you know, Nazi old programs running, you know? It's an excellent place for that type of experimentation to take place because um, much of South America where these sightings are taking place uh, is remote. We have uh, the Andes Mountains Cordillera running through the backbone of South America, for instance. 
We have a lot of secret installations that were that were set up there after the war and even during the war. Uh, Nazi installations in particular, um, research facilities that were built there. Uh, Perón was building a research facility uh, for testing jet aircraft. There was all sorts of things going on. So the possibilities are endless down there. You know, there was a lot going on, and many of the countries were run by dictatorships, which meant they had a lid on secrecy. They had a lid on information. No one could find out. So there's a black hole of information in South America from the 19, late 1940s until really the 1990s and even beyond. I guess I would say I think it's international in, uh, in financial support using uh, a lot of U.S. military technology uh, within deeply uh, clandestine special access programs, what we might call unacknowledged special access programs, very deep black budget. Uh, that uh, my feeling, my sense is that we're talking about multiple groups within this very advanced clandestine community uh, that they don't all share with each other. They might compete actively with each other. It's the impression that I get, at least from, from some research and sources that I've been trying to work in this. Um, and in terms of, uh, you know, who they are, well, I, I would look to... Um, I think very elite financial interests are probably paramount in this. Now, who the names are, I, I don't know yet. We're all trying to find Right, them. exactly. Yeah, yeah. Uh, but in terms of the technologies that I think that are available to this uh, clandestine world, I think they're quite, quite substantial. Uh, keep in mind, in, in the uh, official history of our world, uh, organizations within like the NSA and other, other uh, U.S. military have been vastly far ahead of the rest of the world in computing technology for years. I had a conversation with an NSA scientist who said back in the mid-60s their computers ran at a clock speed of about 650 megahertz. Now that's not fast today, but that wasn't reached by the rest of the world till around the year 2000, so about 35 years. And that's something as basic as uh, NSA computing technology, but what if you've got a lead in studying something even more exotic than what they might have, maybe acquired ET uh, tech, which I think is very likely. Well, in that case, the sky's the limit. And, um, you know, they might have made uh, certain breakthroughs in understanding things that might make them some money, new developments in integrated circuits and the like. But if they make a breakthrough that goes beyond that, they might not be able to share, uh, whether in revolutionary energy, uh, for example, if that's the case, uh, this is not something that would be shared with the world, but it is something that they would continue to exploit, that would give them power beyond the imagining, capabilities beyond imagining, the ability literally to go off this planet if they wanted to. Now, do you think there's a primary you know, motivation for them for doing this? If there's like the one thing, the reason why they would do, do this, uh, what would that be? My suspicion is that one, one of the primary reasons is that they're trying, they're scrambling to try to deal with the presence of these other beings that are observing us, that are probably very actively fascinated by us and engaged in dealing with us. Uh, it could very well be that we are quarantined on this world. Uh, when you look at the history of the Apollo missions and all of the subsequent non-exploration of space, really, uh, it makes one wonder. Uh, there's certainly no shortage of leaks that have come from that world that deal with, uh, that describe bases supposedly on the far side of the moon. Some of these from very credible individuals. Well, what if that's the case? So that there would be a presence of very advanced others that are here, that, um, that our clandestine world might feel that they have to try to deal with in some way. And so part of it could be a secret Cold War. That could be part of it. Mm -hmm. The other part of it would simply be, uh, as every war uh, has winners and losers, they would want to be financial winners. So they would want to use and exploit the technology for the benefit within this civilization that they would continue to run things the way they want to run them. Uh, disclosure, uh, that, that idea, do you think we'll ever get to that point, yeah. official from government? Absolutely I do. Not, I mean, they'll have to be dragged, kicking and screaming to do it. They're, they're never going to do it voluntarily. There's nothing to gain from their point of view, but they're going to have to. And, and the reason is just because of us right now. I mean, you're doing an interview with me with technology that even 15, 10 years ago, 
really was not going to be was not practical. We, we as a society, are the great dynamic. We're the great change agent in this equation. Not these other beings, and not the secret keepers, but us. And we're developing capabilities that are going to force this issue. That's the thing. And I don't know if it'll be next year. I don't know if it'll be 10 years from now. Maybe 20. But I don't think more than that. In which something's going to happen that's going to force this issue. And when that happens, that's when the whole battle begins, doesn't end. See, disclosure is not the end of anything. It's the, the, it's the beginning of everything. It's the beginning of the real fight for truth. The, because, uh, because it's very likely that when we get an acknowledgement that this is real, we, we may not get a lot more. We may not get, you know, a, a little gray alien being a, alongside the president of the U.S. at some podium. That may not happen. And so if it doesn't, there's going to be argument, debate, very, very intense debate over what we're dealing with. Political parties are going to be transformed. It's going to be a, a raucous melee uh, that will probably take generations for us to settle everything out and decide what we're actually dealing with. I, uh, I've seen, I think, on two occasions what I would call a UFO. I don't really talk about it a lot, but uh, both of them were odd. Um, not spectacular, but, but definitely odd. On one occasion, I was um, with my son, who was a very little boy at the time, and it was a, a crystal clear blue sky in my neighborhood. Now, I happen to live near an airport. I see aircraft every day. And in this particular instance, I saw an intensely bright light against a blue sky. It was really, it was the brightest daytime object I've ever seen in my life, other than the sun itself. So I, I was struck by how reflective this object was, and I just stood and, and watched it, just like this. And I couldn't make out a shape. I couldn't make out, like, what this object was, and I was very curious. Meanwhile, my poor little son, who was three years old, started to wonder, what happened to my dad? He's turned into a statue. So he, I could hear him calling for me, like, asking what was going on. But I, I felt like if I, if I took my eyes off this object, I was going to lose it, which was ridiculous because where could it go? There was nowhere for it to go. But I had this thought, don't stop watching, don't stop watching. But eventually I had to turn to my son, who was going crazy down there, wondering. So this is what I did. I pointed, just like this, so I wouldn't lose the object. I turned to my son for about one second, one second. I turned back and that thing was gone. Now, what, what is that? I looked for the next five minutes across the sky trying to find this thing, and it was not there. Was it some intelligence just giving me a little tap on the shoulder? Yeah, maybe. I've thought about it just about every day mm -hmm. since it happened. I had another case when I was walking with my family. We had the family dog. It was in the evening, nice night sky, very thin layer of clouds. And this is many years later. My, it was with my daughter, who was about eight or nine years old. and. Uh, and, you know, in our, our house, I'm Mr. UFO, so I talk about it a lot. And, and I just said jokingly, hey, wouldn't it be funny if we looked up and saw a UFO right now? My daughter and I looked up like this, and sure enough, we saw this object moving at a rate, high rate of speed across the sky. Not as fast as a meteorite, mm -hmm. but much faster than an airplane. And the thing about it is that it went into this thin patch of clouds, very thin, and never came out. So if it was a meteorite, and I still hold out that possibility, but if it was, it just so happened to uh, burn out as it hit this very thin patch of cloud, mm -hmm. just when we happened to look up. I don't know. I am convinced that there's, there's an interaction, a, a mental interaction, at least in many of these cases. Uh, these things somehow, I feel, can get inside our head. Um, there are many cases in the literature of people saying like, uh, you know, I had an urge at 2.30 in the morning to sit up in my bed and look out my window and I saw this glowing orange ball of light. Right. I've spoken to people this has happened. I've, I've read many cases similar to this. Uh, there are a number of instances where witnesses will say over and over again, I felt like it was, it was reading my thoughts. I really have no reason to doubt that after my own two experiences. And it wasn't like I felt someone uh, directing me to do something, but it was very odd. Do you feel uh, that this was ET or man-made? Oh, I don't know. Much? I don't know. Well, uh, my feeling is, and I could be wrong, is that if it's got the ability to get into my head, I suspect it may not be ours. 
but that could be um, a limitation of my own thinking on it. Uh, I've talked about a breakaway civilization enough times. Uh, would they have the ability themselves to penetrate human consciousness? And uh, sure, the answer is they might. Um, one, one source that I, I spoke to that I, I have reason to think knows something about this just you know, said to me, basically, that in certain of their sciences, this classified world is vastly, vastly ahead of the rest of us in computing, in uh, nanotech, in AI. So maybe they have this capability. Biotech also. Um, certainly within uh, what we know of U.S. conventional military capabilities, they've been working on technologies to uh, screw with the human brain for a long time. A lot of the weapons that they used, even back 20 years ago in the first uh, Gulf War, were designed to generate a panic and disorientation in enemy soldiers. I think they were quite successful. Mm -hmm. That's 20 years ago. Mm -hmm. So I think they've got some capabilities now. The problem with the UFO phenomenon today, especially, is when you see something that's bizarre, uh, it's really sometimes hard to know what, am, what are we dealing with. Are we dealing with the us or them? I think that both of these factors are part of the equation. And, and I, think, I think there's multiple us's, and I, I think that there are multiple them's. And, and maybe, just maybe, multiple relationships within that. I think we might really be dealing with a very complex secret Cold War going on. The Rothschild camps, which has got more money than God, aerospace industries, multiple corporate interests, you know, finance, material processing, steel, ships, shipping, oil, you know, they, they run half the planet. You have a subsidiary group that kind of spun off them many decades ago, the Rockefeller Group. Same deal. They have both been developing in secret this kind of physics and technology in cooperation with military, government, you know, there's this unholy alliance, what Eisenhower called the military-industrial complex. Then you've got uh, Dolan's breakaway civilization, which I think Carroll and I have correctly identified as the Nazis. You could say they're neo-Nazis, they're the great-great-grandchildren of the old guard Nazis. They are the inheritors of the technology that Kamler, that Kamler was uh, developing in Czechoslovakia at the end of the war, that went underground, and in 60 years, who knows what they could have developed. It's very misleading to do projections that a given culture is this far ahead, that far ahead, because it's not linear. This physics is literally a godlike power. It puts you in the position of, of you know, God compared to an average human being. So you can't you can't put a number and say they're X number of years ahead. The, the fourth group is, I think, the ancient ETs family, who are. I call them the pirates. They're the bad guys who have been manipulating Earth history for a very long time. And they were the ones that inculcated certain ideas in the Nazi philosophy. People like uh, the Thule Society and, and uh, Baron, whatever his name was, I forget all their very strange personalities. Um, and they're the ones that Joseph and I argue about because he doesn't want to admit that the Nazis didn't do this on their own. And I see clearly the fingerprints of someone using them for their own purposes as manipulable slaves, even though they think they're the master race. Yeah. Then you've got two last groups. You've got good guys who are trying to help in a prime directive mode, a la Star Trek, Gene Roddenberry, who are also our cousins. They're also human. And humans have a stake in what other humans do or don't do. I mean, look at how you know, we rose to Hades assistance, arrived from Japan assistance, because they're, they're part of the human family, even though they don't live here. They are operating, apparently, on a very prime directive, a la Gene. And he probably got it from them. They're the ones who have been 
trying to lift us evolutionarily out of this plight we're in, but they've got certain rules, which is, yeah, you can do all kinds of mathematical symbols and wonderful art and crop circles, but you can't land on the White House lawn and say, are you guys nuts? You're doing exactly the wrong thing. And finally, I think we've got, I think we've got people showing up to just see how it's going to come out. And I use people in the broadest sense. Observers. They're aliens. They're observers. They're probably not stakeholders. They probably don't really, you know, they're not involved, but they're so curious. Are these folks going to make it? Are they going to take control of their destiny? Are they going to figure it out in time? And remember, it only takes 2%. And I have stats on Facebook. When I post something, 2% respond. The other 98% just are, are readers, they're observers. Like most people in life, they're not participants. That's why the 2% can win. Because everybody else just kind of sits around and says, oh, okay, I'm going to go with this crowd because they're winning. That's why we have a shot. We can be the 2%. I do know that um, space pilot uh, Mark Richards is flying, or did fly, to Saturn with an alien craft which had consciousness, and now he sits in jail because of his information. So there is absolutely secret space program going on, and, and NASA, of course, from the beginning has been uh, a military, not just civilian organization and it has two parts uh, the the secret one and and the official one and, and uh, like they say NASA never a straight answer I, I do agree with that because all the information that comes in mass media is normally disinformation I met a Finnish lady many many years ago who was working with Edgar Mitchell and she was working with the uh, Department of Telepathy having contacts with aliens Congress in, in Finland a few years ago when uh, General George Joland uh, was um, giving a speech. It was Civil Military Congress and um, he was uh, at that time uh, the NATO Commander Chief of Europe. I asked him if he or what he meant about the NATO report, their own report from 1964 which was so secret that they only made 15 copies in the world for three languages and there they revealed the reasons why the general public is not given information about our contacts with other civilizations and number one reason was theology all the dogma of all religions will crumble down number two reason was human ego we think that uh, you know there are bacteria somewhere well we are the bacteria we are the ants number three reason was our economy will crumble and number four was that the laws of physics as we know do not you know they, they're not the same as we think in the universe and of course the speed of light is, is, is no hindrance like uh, people on the street think. I was living in Geneva and uh, the commander of chief of the Finnish Air Force, General Rauno Meria, was in Uvascula in Finland, where we have our Air Force uh, headquarters. And we had one hour's interview in the radio, in the Finnish radio, and there he revealed, 91, that Japanese had already exceeded the speed of light. It's not known generally, still. So the information we usually get is, is totally wrong. But when it comes to the human being, we, we believe that, you know, the body is number one, and it isn't. It's very secondary, and when the body dies, your consciousness continues, absolutely, and takes another body, and, and we're eternal. And I think that changes a lot. So remember, UFO question number one reason for secrecy is religion's dogma goes kaput. The control also then goes kaput, perhaps. They control us and they don't want us to know that actually we are eternal, because then you are free. And when you are free, you don't listen to authorities. They can't control you. Well, I would say that the, the military seems to be fighting against the aliens because they don't want things coming out the way aliens want. And I am 
unlike some others I know uh, believing that uh, ETs are good because uh, the negativity abductions kidnappings and whatever uh, in my mind they are done by the military especially in, in NATO countries it's always the military who is also implanting microchips and the whole human race should be my microchip I don't think it should be but they want they, think they military be. wants it sure. all they want is good weapons and what is a better weapon than take over the brains of the children and the whole population since the 1960s we have been test flying and flying craft which have been derived from alien recovered vehicles. The technology has been around since the 1960s. I can tell you that uh, a number of astronauts and various pilots have, from different countries, particularly the United States, have flown these craft, including Gordon Cooper, who I knew. I didn't get that information directly from him, but from others. And uh, it's been going on for quite a while. And there is definitely a secret space program and has been for quite a long while. Now, the actual purpose of it is what is debatable. Is debatable. Well, if, the, if there's one motive, like one primary source why they would do this, what do you think that that would be? I think one possible reason is that this planet's in trouble and we need to establish colonies elsewhere. And some of the aliens who are on our side, if you like, who want to help us out of compassion, have lent us a lot of their technology so that we can achieve that. Have you ever, ever had any personal experiences, either seeing UFOs or even further contact experiences? I have, yes, but my sightings of UFOs are, I would think, on average once every 15 years. I've not seen anything in the sky that remotely could be ascribed to an extraterrestrial spacecraft since about 1997 in Puerto Rico. I've been to Puerto Rico a lot because it's an alien base and a lot goes on there. And you're certain of that, that that's what's going on there? I'm 100% certain and so are most of the islanders. <laughs> and you don't feel that this could have been human technology that, that you were saying? You, you get the feeling that this was ET? Definitely. The creatures that are seen typically in Puerto Rico have bug eyes, which I, I don't have any humans who, who have them like that. They are typically those types of creatures. And uh, they are based all around the island, in the oceans around the island, and on the island itself. For example, in the El Yunque rainforest. there are other so-called aliens or other beings on this planet, they'll just present themselves to whomever, whenever. They don't need to go through the government. I think they're clocking that and realizing that now, so that'd be quite interesting. Either way, it's going to be a massive shock, isn't it? You know, we, 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 I've been into this UFO stuff like, for a long, long time, crop circles and things like that, but it's still going to be, oh my God, you know, if it actually does, I thought it's still going to be, how are we going to actually deal with that and what's going to happen? And, uh, yeah, it's going to be interesting. Yeah. Do you think uh, we, you know, humanity, whatever, are ready, ready for it? Can we take it? Uh, yeah, I think so. Yeah, I think we're being groomed for it anyway through the media and stuff like that. But at the same time, um, that awareness has been there certainly, you know, since before I was born in the last 50 years or so. So, uh, and it's in the public consciousness, and it's it's a fairly obvious reality. You know, you've got to open your mind to it. But there must be other life going on. And, and you know, I'm particularly interested in the crop circle side of it. I'd be, I wish there was a bit more of that here, but uh, we're going to get a lot more of that this summer. So, Do, do you think that that is uh, ET, or are we talking about extraterrestrials, or is it more Earth-related? Uh, that's a good question. Yeah, the crop circle, that's, well, that's one of the mysteries. The more you look into it, it's like the ET stuff, really. Uh, the more questions arise, and the mystery deepens to another level. Uh, it's almost like diamonic reality it sort of keeps one step ahead of you so uh, the crop circle thing is just such an awesome mystery and it's been going on for so long I mean there's a report from near me near Cambridge yeah from the 1930s uh, there's other ones from the 1600s in the county in Hertfordshire in East Anglia so there's, there's stuff been going on for so long 
where that comes from is an awesome mystery and I love it. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I've, I've definitely seen a few UFOs and I've seen some light phenomena at ancient sites uh, and in the whole crop circle country. I mean, I've had what I thought was an abduction experience when I was in my early 20s. So that was very powerful and very strange. And to, to this day, I don't know if it's just a, a very vivid dream. Um, so I was kind of into that stuff anyway, so it could well have been, but it still kind of a, has a profound effect on me. It makes you realize that you're dealing with something much bigger than yourself. We'll certainly have it in some form or other. Um, the problem lies in that you've got two strands of events coming on uh, coinciding at the same time. Um, one is what Von Braun talked about, which was that the last push, if you like, uh, in order to create a global government would be a manufactured, a fake alien threat, a fake alien presence. There do seem to be events that are unfolding uh, that seem to support this hypothesis. I'm thinking particularly of Bluebeam, I'm thinking particularly of the uh, barium and strontium uh, shield that can be projected into the sky through very, very tiny particles to use as a screen, a three-dimensional holographic screen for, for Bluebeam. Um, and I think there's every possibility that they will enact a fake alien threat. However, at the same time, to complicate matters, I do believe there are indeed also aliens, quite possibly uh, benign from our perspective, who may well want to intervene as well. So you've got, you kind of got to pay your money and take your choice. It's, you have to trust your intuition, whatever feels right for you. What's your intuition, then, if we uh, think about it from the point of view of these technologies that you're talking about? Do you think humanity is collaborating with an ET presence here? One thing struck a chord with me today is, is absolutely the recognition that we, as human beings, are not indigenous. We ain't from round here, okay? We are aliens, and I'm absolutely down with that completely. Um, having said that, I think there are two strands of humanity, if you like. One that is blossoming and growing into awareness, and becoming ever more curious about what's going on, and less inclined to accept the old control systems. And you've got the other side, who desperately want to try and hang on to their power as it's getting weaker and weaker and weaker, and just trying everything they can think of to achieve that. What I think is interesting is that uh, the growth seems to be winning. So, yeah, I'm, I'm happy, I'm confident. I, I have an optimistic view of the future. I basically believe that uh, maybe different ETs were fighting in the beginning, and now I I believe that we've joined and that we're fighting with some in support and the other thing that could be taking place is that there is an ET that's been a guardian to fight off others and now they've basically uh, asked us to share in some of the fight and some of the battle and support them and that we are going out into deep space and that Mars and other planets are basically being traveled to regularly and we have patrol craft going around the planet all the time. The human race is a foolish race. They are not standing up to find out the truth. Uh, if somebody tells them the truth then about the UFOs and that they're out there and they're flying and they're battling and the war is going on. They just like, oh yeah, the And so, you know, I let them think that I'm a little bit crazy because I am, but they're a lot stupid. And I mean, it, it's just not, it's just not possible to stay stupid and stay ahead. And we're gonna lose our freedoms and the rights we have on this earth and maybe in the galaxies if we don't stand up get it right and start demanding the truth do you have a hunch in terms of what it is that you're looking at when you see some of the footage that you've shot that this is nuts and bolts type of technology or do you think that it's more exotic than that are we looking at some kind of plasma energy ships perhaps what do you what's your hunch oh. We're definitely looking at some advanced ships, 
that are advanced more so than they were 40 years ago. In you know, at 16 years old, I saw a lot of battling going on all night, and those craft were slower. Their beams wasn't as strong. They couldn't fire as far. And now the ships fly faster. They can change speeds more. It all boils down to whether it's one lie, two lies, or ten lies in a row. It's our. It's what we're being lied to. If they don't give us the truth, I believe that we need to stop. And the people that are paying their property taxes or other things, give the government an IOU until you tell me the truth. My take on all of this, I find it very interesting. I find it's a secret space program. It's a secret medical program. It's a secret economy program. It's a secret everything program. So it's across the board. Uh, things are misrepresented. We're, we're lied to about things. And the, the biggest crime is that we're denied access to necessary information so that we can make informed choices. And that's something that I, I try to work for and try to wake people up about. Do you think that this is human uh, technology above a very advanced one to a very advanced level, or do you think that ET is involved in this? <sighs> that, that, that asks the question then of who is ET. And, you know, there, there are a lot of conversations that I've had um, with different people, and they will give me an explanation about the laws of physics which would govern the life forms that could possibly exist and then I have to say but how can you give that as an, as an example because if you never go outside the box you'll never see anything because you'll be like everyone else who's been told that doesn't exist so it's like okay it doesn't exist doesn't happen we're not going to see it even when they see it are things covered up yes is there advanced technology yes I have my own little um, find that I came across years ago in an old Omni magazine from 1979 where they talked about computers being set to record long distance telephone calls and they would record certain key words. So this was in 1979 and when they were talking about Echelon and oh this is terrible look at what they're doing now I said to Richard you know I had this article and I saved it in Miami and unfortunately paper doesn't hold up there and I have no idea where it was so I tracked down the issue of Omni magazine and I got it if you guys would like it I can email it to you that article and it's a perfect example of sometimes that information bleeds through for some reason someone maybe is able to try to give a heads up or to release something I don't you know there's so many different possibilities as to how it gets through but the bottom line that I got from it was how advanced technology is 30 or 40 years the idea of official disclosure I don't I don't see happening I mean it's all out there in the open for someone to stand up whatever you know figurehead of a president that that's here in the United States or in another country they're just giving the the party line of whoever has backed them or whoever is in control for which whichever group. I mean, I think the, the reason things haven't fallen apart is because you have all of these factions, you know, trying to, you know, yeah, do each other in or to, to climb over each other so they keep some sort of a balance. Have you ever personally had a sighting or furthermore even a contact, something like that? Experience? Uh, my, my sighting was with Ed Grimsley, and that was after a conference in Albuquerque about three years ago, and my first time using night vision goggles, and I saw that formation of about seven light forms, ships, whatever they might have been, but they couldn't be some random thing moving together in those patterns. And the, the big deal was when I looked up without the goggles and I said, oh my God, Ed, what is that? This big V-shaped formation and it moved so slowly. I mean, it's like imprinted that it just moved so slowly. 
And he said, oh, it's all these ships flying in formation. And I looked with the goggles and saw that. It was impressive. It didn't feel that it's a um, different life form. It felt more like a resonance with um, a similar life form to us. I think I was more convinced that it's, uh, in my view, not one group. A lot of people focus on one group. This researcher focuses on this topic in the tunnel. This researcher goes for that view. And I think this conference was about uh, that it, uh, it's all the above. Different groups, complicated. It gets, it, it gets more complicated and more complicated. Mm -hmm. Have you ever had any personal sighting or anything else happening? I, I went to an ambassador tra training at uh, Stephen Greer's house for, for a couple of days. And we, we saw some anomalies there. Uh, the, the stars who flicker and who move in a, in a pulsating uh, order. But what they were, I don't know. I, I, I spoke to somebody uh, this weekend who told me, no, there is a satellite who catches the sun at a certain time and angle every time. So it was not a, a spaceship deep in space. What's your, what's your hunch? Uh, I stay in the middle in this. I don't know. Do you think there ever will be um, official disclosure coming from you know one or a several governments? Or no, I'm on that pace with uh, Richard uh, Dolan. I think something unexpected is going to happen. And what that event is going to be, if it's their, them or uh, some other event that gets the ball rolling or uh, uh, a whistleblower or something like that. But I don't think they're going to announce it uh, officially. I don't, there's too much at stake for them. I, I don't see how they're going to pull it off. Uh, reality is so strange, and of course you got your gut feeling. It can be even true that one of my speakers is an, is an agent, because reality is so strange. So I can't say anything about, uh, about that definitely. Of course, you've got your feelings, that's why I uh, invite them. But things are so strange that, yeah. So I, I try to stay in the middle with, yeah. a, with, with a lot of things. Mm -hmm. With a lot of things. Yeah. I think uh, the, one, uh, the powers that be, they, they are called the powers that be, and I think there are uh, ET connections with these uh, 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 people, or maybe they're not people, uh, they get help from above to do this whole cover-up thing, because I, th I don't think humans are capable of organizing such a big uh, uh, cover-up. I haven't heard that much about this, the secret space program itself, and that there are apparently these battles up there, and I'm sure there's all kinds of other intermingling you know, groups, uh, also black ops, people uh, from the States and wherever, from these big companies that are apparently 50 or 100 years further in their scientific, scientific and engineering development, which I'm really interested in. Now, have you ever seen anything yourself, personal experience? No, no. <laughs> How about you? I've seen something that was very recently, and I asked for it. It's the first time I'm mentioning it publicly, so... <laughs> <laughs> Definitely, all of the above. I think there's lots of different factions as well, fighting amongst themselves, not necessarily um, earth, uh, alien, but more earth-based, you know? Yeah. But I do think there's something non-human behind it all. I think, I think they've been here for a very long time. I think a lot of these are our progenitors. You know, it's our technology. It is us. All the stuff on the moon is ours. All the stuff on Mars is ours from a previous and earlier, more advanced civilization. I mean, the Vedas tell you that as well. Quite possible they're still around, without a doubt. Do you agree with that? 
Yeah, I think so. Yeah, it's um, it just shows that uh, it was already uh, been uh, written down in uh, the ancient history, and now it just repeats itself. And it's well to me, you know, especially in the last year or so, it's becoming so obvious that there is at least something going on that we don't know that. Um, that more investigation is needed. What I saw in December, well, I, I just don't know what I saw, but it wasn't a, um, uh, a flash uh, for about one and a half seconds or so, and it, it just lit up the whole sky, but it wasn't like, it looked like there was something like a ball flying. You know, I because I could see that it had a shape, but I just, it was so fast that I just didn't had a chance to really uh, grasp what I was seeing. But at least the, the whole sky was lit for that one and a half seconds, so that was pretty wild. To February 2004, uh, I just stood outside on my back porch watching aircraft come in and things, and just looked up and there it was. This is, so light went out um, about 500 foot above me, and then this, it was quite a big light as well. Uh, I don't know, 10, 15 meters across, huge. And it just went, gone. And then it was just blackness, no stars, just blackness. It turned into um, uh, the conservatory to shout at my girlfriend to come out and see it. Of course, the time she'd sort of like said she's not going to bother coming out. I mean, there's not that much evidence uh, that is concrete, but there's lots of evidence from people who have seen UFOs or and experience alien abductions, things like that, and also from the evidence that you look at uh, from the government and all the connections, they, all that adds up so much that you can probably say that there are alien races out there. I was here yesterday night and we used the night vision goggles and I saw something moving quite fast along the sky. So my thought there was that it might be a satellite, but Ed Grimsley, who provided the night vision goggles, said no, they are too fast for satellites, and it's probably a UFO, so yes, I have seen a UFO, <laughs> I guess, but not really, no close encounters or a little grey man, unfortunately. Okay. <laughs> yeah, everything falls into place, actually. When I listen to Peter now, you know, I mean, a, a lot of ideas that, that didn't make sense before suddenly make sense. And that's good. Really, that's an eye opener for me. It is. <laughs> have you ever seen anything yourself or experienced anything yourself? For sure. That's the reason I'm here, actually, in the first place. So um, I'm do, doing a follow up. <laughs> what, do you, what did you see, if I can ask you? Well,. I won't go into detail, but it's been like five times in different uh, ages. Of course. Yeah. yeah. We're not alone in the it's universe. It's living, it's knowingly, everybody knows it in, in his heart. So this secret space program thing, do you, you guys think it's primarily ET or is it human beings or maybe are they working together? Both. Both. Yes, They've been working both. together for uh, centuries already, uh, listening to all the interviews yeah. again. Yeah. And uh, so, uh, oh, I believe they're very old, and then people get abducted, ad uh, abducted and everything. They also say, you know, like, uh, that ET's telling me he's been here always, and um, so I've no reason to doubt that, really. Yeah. you agree with that? Oh, yes. I've contact with uh, indigenous people in America, and they tell us that it's just quite normal to have contact with these people. It's so normal. It's already for so many ages. So, so do you think that we will ever get an official disclosure from you know, a government or our governments uh, no, at all? not important. I think this, this is the disclosure. Us, we are doing this the disclosure. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. Oh, yeah. I've seen quite a, a bit of unexplainable phenomenon and that's the that's the thing that also gives me a lot of uh, skepticism is because in my own experience now when I saw something what did I see and can I even you know trust my own mind or my own interpretation of it I know I experienced something I know what I experienced was real but to be able to tell you what that was it's totally subjective to to from my perspective. I don't know about how their capacity, you know, I don't know about jump rooms to Mars and, uh, you know, time windows. I'm sure there are uh, aliens or beings from other planets that they exist. That's very, uh, sh I'm sure about it. 
uh, in how far they are uh, in collaboration with human humans I, I can't say it has been uh, too long a secret and it's very difficult if you uh, know you are t uh, telling a lie to uh, well at one moment to say okay I have been telling a lie and now I'm going to tell you the truth mm. it, it will not happen I saw a small gray uh, well, grey small object and that was going along the sky like that. I lost it out of sight and then I saw something like, well I thought maybe it's a meteorite, I don't know, but it was a flash of light that went after it. We are the aliens, so, so it's, we are, it's all one, so all of us, we are it. We are all in it together, right? So there's no fighting going on? No, 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 no. No? Peace, 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 love, peace, man. <laughs> <laughs> yes, yeah. I've seen things, yes. Uh, but uh, it's, it's, you know, it's really nice to have a gathering like this with this really interesting speakers. Okay. <laughs> because you, you'll never know whether things are true or not. Not yet. We're not there yet. We're not yet able to really understand whether it's true. We can only sense it's true. If I had a UFO, UFO experience, I don't think I'd, I'd recognize it as one. Okay. Yeah. How, about, how about you? Uh, I have never seen a UFO, uh, but I'm sure they are there. There are billions of uh, civilizations much more intelligent than we are. And um, I'm just amazed that we don't see more of it. Well, yeah, I think there's something definitely going on up there, and we're not being kept in the light, are we? Yeah. <clears throat> it's not in their interest to tell us everything, obviously. I think they must have been scared, uh, well, certainly when they got up there and found all those buildings. <laughs> what do you think? Me and my brother, we definitely saw a UFO, didn't we, Vince? And we saw it stop, the light stop in the sky and zip back and forward, stop and then just shot off into space. It was absolutely a UFO. There's no doubt about it. because you can't see them. <laughs> Do you believe in life on other planets? Yes. Because I also hear some time ago that we found water on, a, on a other planets. So That's right. Never know. Why do you think we haven't made contact with the yeah. aliens? I, I think it's just art. But you don't speak our language. I don't believe in aliens. Why not? Because I never saw one. Have you heard of Area 51? Yes, I've heard it. What, if, what do you know about it? Uh, there's a lot of dark stuff going on. What I hear from uh, TV shows, uh, uh, papers, but I don't know what's happening really down there. So why do you think humans are so fascinated with the topic of aliens? Uh, why? Uh, I, don't, I don't know. Because we're, pe we're, we're human beings, we're curious for ourselves. So I, don't, I think life is not interesting enough when we try to uh, go further. For example, Mars, uh, life's not possible at the moon, where can we live now? We go to Mars, oh, it's possible on Mars because we have water and organisms, but it's also another planet, so we try to challenge ourselves to go further. I, I certainly think that aliens exist. And why is that? Uh, because uh, the Earth is a small planet, and I don't know what's out there, and yeah, I, I'm just... Sorry, my English isn't that good, but I just think aliens exist. Do you think that we'll ever make contact with them? I hope so, but I don't know. Do you think possibly our governments might be covering something up? Yeah, I've been here. There were some stories about Illuminati and um, <laughs> things about, how do they call them? Freemasons. Freemasons. Yeah, Freemasons. Yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah, and I think the government, if they know something about aliens, they wouldn't tell us about it. What's that? Do, do you know? Well, I believe in aliens, fairies, trolls, and all the other supernatural creatures. So, and I'm a real fan. <laughs> Why do you think we haven't made contact with aliens yet? Why we haven't made contact? contact. Yeah, they haven't uh, come down and shown themselves yet. I think some people did. Mm -hmm. Sometimes when they walk around, 
the street of Amsterdam and I see some people. <laughs> well, what do you think about alien abductions? A lot of people claim to have been abducted, millions of people around the world. What do you think is going on? Yeah, I, I believe it might be true. Some, some of the stories, it's, it's hard to believe, but it's also hard to make it make it out, such a story. So, I believe it. How do you think the world would change if aliens were walking among us? Well, it depends how they would be. Yeah, good point. Could be great or it could be a disaster. I think so, they ex exist somewhere. But um, as of now, I, I don't think so. There's been any sightings or anything, though. A lot of uh, things have been claimed. But I don't think so. That's my opinion. And, and what about you? Um, yes, in some forms, yeah. In what form? Maybe somewhere in outer space. We haven't found them yet. Uh, so maybe take, no, you know, more technologies developed. We might find something out there. We don't know yet, isn't it? Do you know that the U.S. government has developed some crafts that actually look pretty alien-like? A lot of people talk about them developing alien technology and possibly getting that from aliens. Okay. And developing it in Area 51. Yeah, uh, have you heard be... about the crash in Roswell, New Mexico? No. Oh, you haven't heard about that? Okay. How about crop circles? Have you ever heard about crop circles? Yeah, yeah. What do, you, yeah. do you think they're alien? <laughs> are, are, are they made by UFOs? Oh, possible, but uh, it looks very nice, but uh, yeah, it looks very uniform, isn't it? Okay, yeah. It's massive. Possible. possible. Yeah. Last question. What about alien abductions? Millions of people around the world claim to have been abducted by aliens. Okay, no. A definite pass, I don't know. <laughs> <laughs>